This is a Tracking the Tropics update with a certified most accurate weather team at First Coast News. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta, and this is Talking Tropics, where we break down what's happening around the Atlantic and several areas we're monitoring here on today, June 26, 2025. Of course, we have one area which is kind of noteworthy, uh, definitely noteworthy. It's a low chance of tropical development just around the Bay of Campeche. So it's going to be moving just offshore of Honduras, heading into Belize, where they are going to be looking at some heavy thunderstorms out there. But then eventually crossing the Yucatan and into the Gulf, where the National Hurricane Center has annotated that low risk. Is this going to become a hurricane? Unlikely. Um, but, you know, it's that time of year. We got some tropical areas to watch. So let's break this down here for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. But also, I do want to remind you, we are streaming on several social media platforms. Of course, we always want you to watch us on FCM Plus. So you can be notified when we come online during any severe weather setup or when we have these updates like this. But also, um, we're streaming on Facebook and YouTube. And if you have any questions and you have handles on one of those, Please feel free to ask. All right. So first off, yeah, the low risk of tropical development. This was put out here on our Thursday evening uh, in the Atlantic. Um, it, it's a loose area of convection, but it is an area of convection nonetheless. Moving on, we're very warm. Uh, waters there in the Bay of Campeche. You got some decent thunderstorms just off the coastline of Honduras, really skirting the coastal areas there. They're going to be looking at a lot of lightning for a heavy rainfall, all of that stuff. And that's going to come on shore there. They're just south of Cancun, which if you got plans to go to Cancun, I suppose just not, not a good, uh, good holiday weekend here for you because it's going to be absolutely sloppy as this moves off there towards the west uh take a look at the rainfall forecast in fact the northern areas of the yucatan are looking at some spots two three four inches over 100 millimeters for our mexican friends out here of total rainfall as it skirts towards the west and eventually that moisture is actually going to get skewed towards the north and get drawn over towards the southeast united states including the first coast where we are here of course in jacksonville um you're going to be looking at increase in rainfall throughout this upcoming week and likely into next week and too kind of not directly associated with but semi associated with this tropical wave currently located out here over the yucatan so yeah that's going to be one of the big things with this i think is the total rainfall that's going to come with it and, and you take a look at our gfs this is a gfs forecast and i'm just slowly moving it along here and trying to wrap up this area of low pressure there in the gulf off the coast of mexico could be looking at increase in rainfall places like south padre El um, south padre island there and near brownsville or maybe out towards Galveston as well, or Corpus Christi more like it, as this comes on shore. It's not a full-on tropical area, but definitely some sloppy weather for the east coast of the uh, Texas and the Mexican coastline. Uh, some of these areas, rather dry, you get a lot of rain all at once, can create a bit of flash flooding, especially in those low-lying coastal plains here. So it doesn't need to be a named storm system to have problems i'll tell you that um i mean i've seen that plenty of times in the past this is our high resolution in-house future cast showing you this area moving over the yucatan peninsula you have that broad circulation trying to spin up there in the gulf and then you see as it moves off there towards the north and west actually this particular model kind of tightens it up just enough where you can have that moisture streaming on shore around corpus christi over towards south padre island the spaceport out there which i don't think it's operational after the starship uh, explosion last week but you know that area uh, is going to be impacted by this, probably the most if we're talking about impacts in the continental United States here. So, yeah, that's the look at that 72-hour forecast. Definitely that chance of this wrapping up. And sea surface temperatures are warm enough. Um, outside of just along the immediate northern coastline of the Yucatan there. You have 84 degrees, 83 where it's at right now, in the middle of the Gulf, mid-80s there. But that's not the only thing. Uh, sea surface temperature anomaly, so you're departure from normal um is well above average across this area but i like this graphic just put this one together the deep warm water so we're talking about how far does those sea surface temperatures extend down so the 80 degrees how how deep is it areas in yellow and reds indicate it's 
deeper, more energy available for tropical systems while the area is in blue. It's, it's just right at the surface. So when you get a tropical system, it kind of stirs up the ocean and brings up cooler water from below. So when these areas move over that deep um, layers of warmer water, that provides more energy in short. And that is helping the potential for this area to really flare up with that convection and maybe get organized, but I don't think it's just going to have enough time before it moves over the Yucatan and that's going to disrupt it. And then it moves over the Gulf and yeah, waters are warm enough out there, but you don't have that pocket, that pool of deep warm water to help continue to fuel up this area. So I think this is also this just kind of tropical energy here in the waters around the Bay of Campeche, just off of Honduras, Belize, uh, are, is the reason why we have all of that convection. You can just see it right over exactly the same spot. There's in that circle. Then we'll go back to the other map real quick here with you. And you can see where that deep warm water is and where that area of convection is. They do line up one and one. And this is just going to provide more energy for it. But like I said, I don't see a lot of time for this to wrap up nicely to become a name type storm system before it runs over the mountains of the Yucatan and then eventually into the Gulf where it's already going to be disrupted and kind of spread out. It would get a second opportunity to wrap up but and that's when the national hurricane center is saying a low risk of tropical development of course they could increase that or decrease it completely if this falls apart over land it's one of those things where you kind of want to watch it closely meanwhile for our friends here on the first coast and across the state of florida hi guys how's it going if you're watching on our social media platforms give me a comment down below and let me know where you're watching from but look at the broad circulation here now, this is not tropical, all right? This is a mid-level low, but look at the clouds closely. See all of this? It feels tropical. I'm going to tell you that. I'm not trying to hype it or anything, but, I mean, look at the broad circulation here. And this is providing a an abundance of instability. So we don't have an organized low by any means, my goodness. But it's this big old gyre of moisture and instability, vorticity aloft, I call it atmospheric spin. Basically, if you have cyclonic rotation in the atmosphere, it's going to allow upward vertical motion and thus increase thunderstorms. And that is on the high side here on Friday, Saturday, over towards Sunday across the southeastern United States. So you do have this broad mid-level low it's already moving on shore, but it is picking up the energy from those warm waters across the west and east coast of the state of Florida. You have upward vertical motion. So this is not going to get named by any means. My goodness, it's not even being monitored by the NHC. But I am putting it in the tropical update because of the energy it's getting from those warm waters and the fact that it is going to bring scattered showers and thunderstorms here around the first coast. And here's a closer look at what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead here. Well, first, let's rewind it a little bit and go back to Friday after afternoon there you go plenty of thunderstorms right there then we'll scoot this ahead into about saturday there you go about two o'clock yeah there's another round of storms two three four o'clock on saturday on the first coast including jacksonville which means you know if you got those outdoor plans here on saturday you're going to be wanting to watch for uh some rain delays you're taking the boat out i would highly suggest getting it out in the morning but by the afternoon you're going to be what i call boat frogger you're going to be looking at storms here storms here and you go okay how do i get around all of this right and if you're maybe heading out to something like the jumble shrimp um but i think their first pitch on saturday is a three o'clock game uh you're going to be wanting to watch out for those lightning and rain delays here too just because of that messy setup and then on sunday more storms are in the forecast they'll be scattered all across the area very moist heavy atmosphere <clears throat> which means that increased chance of maybe some pooling on roadways and things like that. Uh, but plenty of storms in our forecast here throughout the week. And in fact, here at First Coast News, we do have a weather impact alert in place. Not the hype or anything, just to let you know there's going to be those broad impacts. And if you have any questions on that, let me know. But make sure you check out firstcoastnews.com. We have a whole article there just kind of talking about it. Meanwhile, if we go back to the main formation area, which we that, that's a meteorological term for basically the, the stretch from the Lesser Antilles out towards the uh, Cape Verde Islands off of the west coast of Africa. And yeah, we got a couple tropical waves. We have one there just east or north of uh, 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 French Guinea. And then we have another area off south of the Cape Verde Islands. But there's something else mixed in here. Dust. A lot of it. A lot of dry air. 
And that is going to continue to work its way from the southeast towards the northwest. In fact, central and south Florida and all of Cuba, really, as we look ahead, what happened to my title right there? But as we go ahead through the weekend, are going to see some pretty decent sunsets and sunrises probably because of the increase here in red of that Saharan dust being blown all the way from the west coast of Africa, the Saharan desert, that's why it's called Saharan dust, right? Um, makes sense. Uh, and that will inhibit any tropical formation, including what you see here on the west side of that area in red over towards the western gulf. That's where our tropical area actually is going to be uh, moving into. So it's just skirting the outer edges of all that Saharan dust and that dry air. And probably one more reason why the National Hurricane Center is giving it a low risk of tropical development. If it was a little bit further towards the north and east, it would just be running into this and that would absolutely tear it and rip it apart. But yeah, there's that Saharan dust, which more or less, as we look ahead through this extended forecast, is going to be keeping tropical development on the low side across the Atlantic in that main formation area here. So to say a big shout out and a big thanks to Saharan Dust if you do not want a tropical system to form up. Our next name storm system though would be Barry um, if one were to develop. Remember Andrea was named here last week in the North Atlantic. A little interesting storm. Got absolutely sheared apart, but it did, uh, it did gather just enough strength to be named here. Uh, last week. So let me go back and I'm going to check out, um, see if we got any questions. Lisa out of holiday. Hopefully you're doing a fantastic, or you're having a fantastic uh, day out there. Um, let's see. Christopher's here. I hope you're doing fantastic, Christopher here. And let me see if we have anybody on YouTube that was on our Facebook pages. Um, let's see if we have anybody on YouTube asking any questions or anything like that. I don't see anybody. Oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> this person's name, I, 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 I would like to hope it's a meteorological name. It's Passing Wind, that's fantastic, on the west side near Huang or Cecil Airport. I call it Cecil, I'm old school, I suppose. That was in a Navy when it was still uh, Cecil out there. Um, thanks for stopping by. And uh, I want to keep an eye, if you're in Jacksonville, uh, on the afternoon storms here, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, because of that broad uh, mid-level rotation in the clouds here. And I can go back to that one more time, and I'm just going to touch on it real quick. Uh, that broad mid-level rotation, which is continuing to bring that instability across not only the first coast, but the southeastern United States for that matter. And you can really see it right here. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. I got to... There we go. Um, yeah, you can really see it here. Those storms off the west coast into the uh, Gulf, heading up towards the Big Bend area. You got some storms uh, flaring up there around the Daytona area, plenty in the South Florida, and it really is just this moisture trying to uh, wrap up here. So, yeah, it, it, it's a messy setup, and that's going to continue through the week. And in fact, I'm just going to bounce over real quick to the weather impact alert that we do have in place here on the first coast. And, and that is due to uh, this instability here um, for throughout the weekend. So we wanna make sure you're staying planned uh, with that, with this mid-level low. Numerous showers, about two to eight o'clock. You're gonna have some freaking lightning, heavy rainfall. Sunday morning, a bit of a break if you have those outdoor plants, but then it returns on Sunday evening as well. Those slow moving storms, localized uh, flooding concern there too. So plenty to, uh, to watch out for here but of course if anything changes in the tropics we're always going to keep you posted here at first coast news and you're already watching this so you're ahead of the game but if you want to um download the first coast news app one and make sure you uh watch us on fcm plus we're gonna have more local content my <laughs> kind of news job i've been assigned here is to put out more content whether related online and that's my goal and we're doing that right now but if you go to firstcoastnews.com, we got articles, we got local information, we got tropical, we got science, we got a lot of stuff, and we want to be your go-to source here for good, accurate, tropical, and, and not just forecast, but informational to educate you so you can make proper decisions because that's the point of our job, right? So that's what I'm going to be trying to do here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm going to do one more quick check of our comments and try to answer some of your questions here on any of our social media platforms. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day out there, though. And um, Thanks, as always, for, for watching. Uh, 
Malcolm, our digital producer behind the scenes. Shout out to him. I think I'm going to wrap it up here, though. And uh, big thanks for everybody stopping by. If you have any additional questions, though, you can always comment here or you can shoot me a message at rspeta at firstcoastnews.com or hit me up on any of our social media platforms. All right. Have a great day. This is a Tracking the Tropics update with a certified most accurate weather team at First Coast News.